Hello, everybody. So, I'm Peter, and I don't usually look like this. Uh, this is my picture, if you can see it, this is how I normally look like. Uh, just to, if you see me online, so this is the same person as, as talking here. And I'm gonna talk about uh, our project, which is called Diedesh. It's uh, about transportation and mostly about what we, what technologies we use and mainly, and mainly AngularJS. Who of you knows AngularJS? Please raise your hands. Okay, so there are probably have to be some short introduction. Um, well, on the back end we mostly use Rails or some other framework. But on the front end, there are several very good JavaScript frameworks, and AngularJS is one of them. And I think it's quite interesting because not only because it's made by by folks uh, in Google, it's, uh, especially uh, Slovak and Czech guys who are behind this project in uh, Google Mountain View, but also because it tries to be. The, the future or how the future web applications might look like. It ties declarative HTML together with imperative JavaScript. So you don't have some some spaghetti code inside your inside your templates or uh, you don't you don't have a template inside your JavaScript. There is a small Example down here, which basically says that we have here some some template that we want to bind our value into, and there is an input where we can where we can type something, and it's automatically bound to this to this your name variable on the same scope as this your name variable that's going to be displayed. So if we if we try it, this is uh, this is the the input box. If we type something into it, the value is automatically bound to to the scope and automatically displayed in the view. So this is this is the basics, but I'm gonna talk more about the interesting stuff. So we're now. Go back to the presentation and first something about the project. It shows you a timetable and you can you can uh, see uh, when your friends go. And we basically wanted to make something that already exists, but much more user user friendly. So we at the beginning decided on using some some. Uh, JavaScript framework, so most of the most of the work is done on the client side. This is important. We we have just Rails API that serves some data to the JavaScript client, and all the logic, all the display logic is made by Angular JS. So first, I'll try to explain how easy it is to use Angular JS together with Rails. Then I'll show you how Angular being a pure, purely client-side JavaScript project makes testing very easy. If you've ever tried to test a client-side, it's usually very difficult because you don't. If if you just put some some jQuery stuff inside your your web page, it's not so easily done. Angular JS makes it very very easy. I'll show you some components of Angular that we use. And if we have some time, we get to extras and uh, and Q and A. So this is a structure how you can put Angular JS into your Rails application. Normally, we have app folder, and inside the app folder, the Rails structure is that we have controllers, models, and all the stuff that's on the server side. On 
the client side, we just take this structure and put it inside app as a JavaScript. And we again have these controls, models, some services and stuff, uh, which together create the, the, the application, the client side application that, that you use. How we test? Well, Angular, folks behind Angular created this, uh, this testing tool named Testacular. This is an old name from, from this Monday, it's been renamed to Karma. So the name, if you know Testacular, now it's named Karma. You can vote if it's a good name or if it's, the choice is good or, or not. That's, but I think we'll stick with the name. And what it does, it, it runs our tests. Uh, we, have, we have the modular app, and now I'm going to present you the code. Business. This is some control action that gets called whenever a user presses search button on a website. So they want to search for the travels. And um, because we have this on a client side as a, as a function, as a, as a model, uh, we can very easily test it from the, from the testing framework using dependency, using uh, variables that we can inject into into the code and and basically if you've ever written a backhand test this is just Jasmine running on the front end looking very similar to how you would write your test on a on the back end. The the component architecture of AngularJS makes this very easy and I really haven't seen this in many other JavaScript uh, frameworks. If I... I can start the, the test runner using Karma Start. This is a Node.js uh, Node application which starts in, on the back end a Chrome server and runs all the tests against it. We can see that if we change our tests, it should fail. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, probably this test is testing something um, yeah, this is much better test, which tests for the name that's gonna that's being passed into the, the, the query. If I change this, I can see that that uh, here on this line, we we expected the parameter to be Ostrava, and it was just uh, this. Uh, you can you can use. You can use the, the standard uh, testing paradigm that you use on the, on the, on the back end. You don't have to refresh the page. You don't, you, I, can, I can write the whole function and see if it works just in, in the, in the, uh, from the text editor. And the tests tell me if it's correct or not. I don't have to go into the browser itself. So this is this is unit testing, and Karma also makes it easy to test the application uh, for the functionality end-to-end -end testing. This is very similar to Selenium uh, in terms that you just. You just specify that you want to go to the root page, input some some parameters, click on the search button, 
and then you expect that there are some travels returned onto the web page. Uh, the benefit of using uh, Karma for testing Angular JS is because it, it naturally deals with asynchronous testing. You see that we didn't have to say this this pause is just for for uh, debugging, but we don't say anywhere here that wait for the 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 JavaScript to send a request to the server, return the value, and then you can test it. The expect automatic automatically waits for the for the uh, answer, and really these four lines test the, fun the, the core function that we enter some input values and we get a result back. This is this is I think very very easy and and makes it much very very interesting to develop client side applications. And to to be sure that uh, that your tests are uh, or your code is correct, when whenever someone pushes code to the repository, we have we have uh, uh, Jenkins in the cloud, which automatically pulls uh, changes whenever we push to Bitbucket or GitHub. You can you can set it up with uh, with several services. So whenever we make a change and push the code, the uh, the cloudbees.com service provides some free free quota for uh, for Jenkins. You can buy more if you wish, or you want, or you uh, may want to run the the continuous integration server yourself. But uh, it this is this is the final step of the testing process. That uh, that. You can be sure that all the code that's, that's uh, in our repository passes the tests. I think this is very important and again, very easily done using AngularJS and, uh, and uh, this service. So that was for testing. Now about some Angular components or modules as they are called. Uh, module is a package, or it's basically a component of functionality that you can use repeatedly. So you can have a login component, or you can have a service that a service that talks to some backend, and this you can package as a as a module. Then, if you want to use the module, you just have to you just have to define it as a dependency of your of your module. So our module is named Dienesh and these are the modules that we depend on. You of course need to provide those in the, in the code. Uh, there is this website ngmodules.org which contains uh, several modules that other people from the community have uh, have created and there are there are I think several main, mainly user interface uh, uh, modules that you can use for for many purposes for tying to bootstrap automatically or or making a, a grid so that you have basically a, a spreadsheet done online where you can where you can modify the values inside the page and it automatically binds the values back so you have the, the models automatically updated. One, one module I want to point out specifically is uh, Rails resource which you might want to use with, uh, if you're using Rails as the backend. Uh, Dollar resource is a comp is a module provided by Angular itself, but it's not as versatile as as for example this Rails resource, which gives you much more opportunity possibilities to to handle 
the data that you get back or the format that you that you send uh, the the JSON request to the, to the API server. Uh, this is if you, if you ever start doing something with Rails, then I'll post this uh, this presentation online so you can get back to it and just find the link there. And uh, one more thing to to modules, it's if you want to use an external module, the, the thing about Angular JS is that to provide the automatic data binding, that is if I change a value in, a, in an input field and it automatically updates the view, this is done by, by running um, a check, a digest check that basically goes through all the module values and updates updates the views wherever a change might have happened. And for this to 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 run, uh, it needs to be it needs it needs to be in the apply block. So what what apply block does is it runs the code inside it and then calls digest, which automatically updates. Uh, the values. Why am I talking about this? Uh, because if you, let's say, want to use socket I/O inside your Angular application, if you you can you can create a module uh, named socket or service named socket that, that you just uh, that you just inject into your co controllers and. If you didn't call it inside the apply, the Angular wouldn't know that any change in the data has happened. So this is this is a common part, pattern. If you use any data service or anything that might change the values, you just you just uh, wrap it in the apply block, and and you get all this uh, uh, two-way data binding that Angular JS natively provides. So that was mostly about AngularJS, and if we have some more time, I want to point out two two libraries that I think are very interesting. The first one is SugarJS. If you know underscore, that's uh, who knows underscore. So underscore is a JavaScript library that provides you a lot of uh, useful methods like uh, like for each or or map or or many other many, many other functions that you can call on arrays, strings, etc. That you know from Rails, but the the syntax is very weird. Sugar.js provides basically all the same functionality as underscore plus its modular plus some other benefits plus it it uh, appends the methods on the native object themselves so now we can for example call first method on an array which is not normally possible in JavaScript or we can call an average method on an on a pure JavaScript array sugar.js does it by uh, injecting this, these methods into JavaScript by in, in, a, in a quite safe way, so it's it's usually not recommended to to uh, add additional methods. But if you if you know about this, uh, then I think you can use it very safely, and it gives you a lot of functionality that uh, that Rails provides or Ruby provides out of the box inside JavaScript with very similar syntax. And finally, one purely Ruby thing, uh, Spork, who, who writes tests in Ruby? Hands up. And who uses Spork? Okay, so maybe some explanation. Spork is, uh, if, if you want to run a, a test in, in Rails, you have to first start the application, which usually takes 5-10 seconds depending on the application. 
And Spork preloads the application, so then when you want to run the test, it can run against the already running application. So if you if you just want to run one simple test after after each code change on on, on a save of a file, uh, it it runs instantly if you have the environment already running. This is what Spork provides. And Zeus goes beyond that. It not only provides a stable or running uh, environment of the application for your tests, but also for for console, for rake tasks, for uh, starting the server that, that would serve the application. And all this starts basically instantly. Unfortunately, it's not available for Windows because it depends on some <laughs> some FS event stuff. And that's it. Um, that's it. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we're we're working on this one cool project about transportation in Czech Republic and possibly extending to Slovakia and other countries. And I'm also working on some other projects and as everyone is still looking for uh, for new people, we are too. Uh, if this or some other things that I've said uh, is interesting for you uh, or you have some other questions, just come and ask. If you have some question right now that you want everyone else to hear, then please ask now. I actually have one. Um, I've been using Vacuum.js, which is, which is somewhat incredible, right? Uh, because uh, I also have the restriction to only really work as the CPH JavaScript application, or can I actually use it also with mix and match? So, if I have a standard rates application, I need part of it. Uh, uh, agents all the way stop uh, going on. Is that possible? Because back on restricts it, they are really hard. So, um, if you go away from the parody, you have to go with a single page JavaScript and yes. application. If you have multiple pages. Yes. So if, the question is if you have multiple multiple pages that you serve from the, the server, yeah. can you use some can you use the the framework between the pages? Yeah. Uh, well, no. <laughs> but that's I think that's that's by design of how client and server rendering works. There is you you can the only thing you can do is is uh, just request the 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 part of the page and inject it into the existing page. There is there is really nothing special about JavaScript that would go beyond how the, the browser architecture works. Actually, actually don't think I, I have um, just a standard great application. A part of it, let's say, messaging uh, should be more dynamic, more Ajaxy. Um, if you use uh, only just some subset of the page, but that messaging um, suddenly go to a package.js application, it will interfere with everything and make it impossible to really work. So it will really encounter for example, the uses this weird URLs jump between the requests and that interferes with over URLs. Does AngularJS do the same? Does that not have the problem with the dispatcher or um, um, I don't think it provides anything extra. Okay. The, Ang Angular JS is mostly about structuring the application and binding JavaScript code with the views, which is the biggest problem that every JavaScript framework deals with. And Angular JS does it in very interesting way, but it it doesn't make miracles. Okay. Um, I'm going to do some Some other questions? Thank you.
What about the browser compatibility? Is it working on, on Android devices or something like this, which is not very powerful? Yeah, very good question. Browser compatibility. Um, first thing, uh, it's it's not a problem to polyfill stuff that you, for example, for IE6, IE7, to make this work. Uh, however, it's it's a client framework, which means that uh, a lot of functionality uh, is done on the client, which needs to be to have some some performance and. Basically, the, the most difficult thing that Angular JS does is computing the, 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 the view, the, the values that might have changed for the view. And uh, this depends on how, how well you write your application. Uh, this, this is maybe not so great thing about Angular JS, but it's by design and it's it's uh, probably the best way how to do two-way binding is that it, it runs the, the, the binding for all the views that are currently displayed. So uh, if you have a lot of data on the page and you change just one bit, AngularJS doesn't do tracking of which part changed, it just calculates it all over again for all for all the, the views. So it's very important to write uh, small functions or the, the functions that cal calculate the values have to be really fast. And generally it shouldn't be a problem to display a few hundred data points on a website and recalculate them without the user noticing it within 50 milliseconds. That's that's the benchmark that the Angular JS team focuses on. 50 milliseconds. If if you can do all the computation under 50 milliseconds, the user wouldn't see the difference. And I think if you have if you have still faster and faster. Uh, Browsers, even on Android, this is this is becoming less of an issue if the if the functions that calculate the values are fast enough. So what, one one last question probably. Um, well, I don't. If, well, the question is if I use if I use com code completion plugins for Sublime Text for Rails. Uh, I don't. So, but, uh, but I'm sure I'm sure that I might I may have some installed in, in Sublime, but I'm just not used to it. Um,